Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Quixel's Mixer. What is Mixer? Uh, it is a currently free beta uh, texture generation application, and it is actually very, very cool. Now recently, uh, we had a bit of a news issue in that Substance Painter was purchased by Adobe, and I know a lot of people aren't particularly happy about that, so I researched the various different alternatives that exist, and one of them that came up is Quixel Mixer, and that's exactly what we were looking at today. Quixel Mixer is a texture-based solution. It's kind of Quixel moving away from their existing suite, which was Photoshop-based, and moving towards Mixer, and Mixer also integrates with another Quixel product, which is called Megascans, which is a gigantic collection of scanned textures, and you use those things together to create texture maps, and you can create a PBR workflow based texture map, very, very simply. Here's one of the examples it comes with. And as you can see, there is the generated result. So what you can actually do is toggle off each layer and see what the effect of said layer is. So let me just zoom this back a bit and we'll see. So we got a custom tiles layer, concrete slab, checker tiles, and so on. So I'm gonna turn this one off and there you see those tiles that were generated from it are gone. Concrete, checker tiles, scuffs, rough concrete, uh, hidden tiles, gravel, noise, and moisture. So what I can do, there we go. So what I can do is come into any one of these things. For example, uh, custom tiles, and you'll see here we've got a diffuse, specular, gloss, and displacement map, and I can draw with the brushes here. So this is the part that is similar to Substance Painter in effect. So this is gonna basically draw the gravel over, this is a mask over other layers. So you see, as I draw through, the gravel replaces over those tiles. And each particular layer works a little bit differently. And I'll show you actually creating a texture from scratch. But I wanted to show you just like a top level of how this guy works. And then the rest of it is really, really straightforward. You've got some settings that are, you can set the size of the resolution that your texture starts at. So 2K, 4K, 8K, uh, 1024, 512, or 256 is your working resolution. So uh, if you're trying to create a real-time map, you might want to start down here. If you're working for film, you might want to work up here at 8K. Um, also, that's going to have a performance impact. For the record, I'm running this on a 1050 GTX laptop. Uh, I've even ran it on a Surface that's not GPU accelerated, and it ran just fine. So performance-wise, this thing is great. Uh, we've got a couple of settings over the display. We could set up a flat background or a skybox. Uh, the, we can change the field of view, uh, the tessellation amount of our map, and so on. Um, come here, we got a couple of performance options. And then finally, when you are done, you can go ahead and export. It's a single click export. So I'm saying export as 2048 uh, ping format, and it will export these following different channels. And if you want to add more channels, you basically just come down here and do add another map and you can define another channel. So using these particular settings, you can then basically import this into any PBR related workflow, Unity, uh, Godot, Unreal, uh, Blender, so on, and get it working. Now you're not going to always have a one-to-one -one map. For example, uh, roughness map doesn't necessarily exist. Displacement map might be called a height map in some particular cases, but it's it's pretty easy to work with at, on the whole. Over here, we've got, we can switch between the various different channels we're working with. So PBR is kind of like all channels. So we could go into the diffuse channel. This is just the color. This is the specular mapping. This is the gloss map, the roughness map, the normal map, displacement map, and the occlusion map. So you've got all the various different channels you're working on. So in some ways, it is a lot like Substance Painter, if you're already familiar with that. Now, where the Quixel uh, Mega Scans integration comes in, if I want to add a new layer here. So we've got various different layers here. I can add a new surface layer, uh, and I can pull it from the local library, which is all of my downloaded materials, or you can actually go online. And this is where the Mega Scans come in. Now, Mega Scans itself is a subscription-based service and gives you access to their high-resolution material scans and such. And you'll see here we've got hundreds upon hundreds. So we've got 2,000... Um, 2,228 plants scanned already, as you can see. Now, some of these are masks, some of these are, um, or decals, and then some of them are just straight up material. So here we are on rock. You see the various different rocks available, and I can click on one of these guys, and there is the scan. Almost always they're seamless, so this end will match to this end, and then you see there's a point cost. So your subscription might be 360 points and that would cost two of your particular points you can buy more points i believe for cash whatever so you can bring these in and then use them as channels over here i'll actually show you this process from scratch in just a second so the final thing to show you is in the viewport here right now i'm just doing a simple pan around we could also switch the lighting so here we're, we're setting the lighting rig for our environment so there's studio versus street lights versus overcast days 
versus desert road. So you can get an idea of what each different lighting environment is going to feel like or impact your map. And we can switch between perspective and um, an orthographic projection switching right here. And that is kind of the extent of it. It's actually a very simple to grasp and straightforward program. So now what we can do also is then we're going to go ahead and um, create a new map. So a new mix. We'll do this from scratch. I'll call this YouTube demo map. Uh, we'll do it at 1024 just because. Uh, then you got a choice between a specular or a um, metallic um, uh, lighting model. Uh, I'll stick with a metal map on this particular case. And then we'll click OK and we'll go ahead and create that. So there we are. We're completely from scratch. So now what I can do is I can come in here and basically add a surface layer. And I can use all the various different ones that I've downloaded. So right now let's say we want to have the base being uh, worn brick. So I drop that in, we'll give it a second to process, and then we'll have our warm brick layer there immediately in. And then we can go through, we can add decals on top. I don't actually have any decals to work with, so that's not going to happen. We can do add a solid color mix in. So you see we've got the various different options over here. So we can drop down the opacity of that mix in. So you can see the immediate results of that color there. Um, and then I can, I forget how to actually change that color. Oh, here we go. So if I wanted to do a red mix in, I can, or blue, or so on, various different colors. We can we can drop them in that way. Or if we want to get rid of it, I can just right click, or I can just highlight it and hit the delete key. So you can do a full color in there. You can add a solid layer. Um, did I just repeat myself? Yes, I did. All right, let me, oh, I got a lot of solid layers going on. Uh, we can do a liquid layer, which is actually really cool. So we can add a layer of, of water on top of here, and we can change the amount or the opacity of our water. So you can pull that down and have less water, more water. It's very finicky though. So zero, zero is the point of kind of, oops, so there we had all, now we're basically flooded. So let's go back to zero. And there you see we're kind of mixed in. So we can add like very, very small amounts. So 0 0.05. And you see we're just kind of getting a little bit more water in the world. And we can kind of drag it each way to basically change out our layer of wetness. But then what's kind of cool is I can add a noise layer, which is going to be kind of like a height map. And then we're going to see we're going to start like that. And then we can have our liquid layer kind of fill in the cracks and crevices. It should have filled in that layer as well, but it didn't in that particular case. Now, the, where the challenge is going to lie is you're going to sit in there and go, okay, well, I don't want to subscribe to their uh, texture service. I don't want to sign up for a subscription. That's why I'm not going with uh, Substance in the first place. What can I use this thing for? Well, there's a couple things. First off, they make a, about 50 texture maps available for free. So if you go online and you search for free, anything here you can grab and download and add to your kit. These things are huge, by the way. But let's say we want to have this uh, manhole cover in our scene. You can come on in here and basically just download it. And it will download and add to your uh, local library. So now in once it's finished downloading, uh, we'll have a manhole cover available. Uh, I don't know where I get the progress indicator. But oh, yeah, right there. So once that is finished downloading, we now have a new material in our local library. But perhaps most importantly, you can actually bring in a texture from any source whatsoever. So for example, here uh, over on Dev Game, and I'll link this down below, I did a 3D resource roundup. So I did models. And more importantly, I also did texture map resources. And there are a ton of places to get high quality PBR texture maps. And one of them I'm going to go to is CC0 Textures. So let's link off to there. This is a place where, again, you can get 428 public domain PBR texture. So if I wanted to do, uh, I don't know, let's do ground. So come in here, grab a ground texture. Let's find the most interesting looking, actually, let's not do ground. Let's do bricks. Bricks are always interesting. So let's come in, grab some old school bricks right here. So we can download in various different resolutions. I'll grab the 4K version, let it download. Okay, it is down. So now I can do, let's come in. That should be in my downloads over here. That's documents. Okay, downloads. Uh, I can extract that archive. All right. So there are my various different maps now available that I just downloaded. So you see, we got an ambient occlusion map, a color map, a displacement map, a normal map, and a roughness map. So now I can come back here to uh, Mixer. I can say library, and then I can do an import. So import custom surface, and then I just pick the first one. So the diffuse one is what they call color. So just grab that guy. 
and then it'll automatically by the extensions figure out all the other ones. So it pulled them all in. So you see the various different results that it pulled in. Now you'll notice the, the strength is a little obscene, uh, but we've got the various different maps automatically imported. So our roughness, ambient occlusion, normal, and displacement map were automatically brought in. And then you can see here, uh, there's other channels that we could have done. So um, uh, cavity or metalness or, or specular. Uh, so I'm going to go to the next level. Uh, we can say how big of a sample size. We actually have to. So I'll say one by one. I'll call this uh, bricks. Put it in a category. Uh, brick wall works for me. Uh, give it a height if we want. Give it a tag if we want. And then go ahead and import it. So there we go. There is our new bricks. Um, so I could go ahead. There we go. We added a layer of brick on top. So I could just delete this base guy here, bring our original bricks down below our liquid, and there is our newly imported bricks. And we can also change the uh, the frequency, how high up it is, how far down it is, so on. Uh, the threshold, which is kind of where the mixing part comes in, um, and so on. It, it, it's really simple to bring in your own materials to Mixer, which makes this quite powerful. So if you have a, 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 um, a huge collection of PBR textures of your own, basically you've got to go through the process of importing them. You can also import them from a folder, which is kind of cool too. So if you want to batch bring in a bunch of things, you should be able to do it easily. But once it's added, so now if I go back to my local library, there you see we've got a brick. So even if you're not going to use Megascans, you can use Mixer as a texture generation tool for your own library of PBR assets, which is pretty awesome to be honest. So back a little bit about Mixer itself. Uh, so let's head on back over to the Mixel website. Uh, you've got here, obviously you can see it is currently completely free. Um, so head on over to quicksold.com forward slash Mixer. And you can see a bit of a rundown of what's going on here. How long is it going to be free? Uh, I, I unfortunately don't know. But if you are looking to create uh, texture maps, this is is a great option. And then when we get to the end, what they probably will do is move Mixer into their various different other areas. Right now there's a, a free version anyways for 100k or less, uh, but you don't get any credits. But then we got various different tiers and so on that you can get into. So I think Mixer will ultimately be probably bundled with the Megascan stuff. And then that is on, unfortunately, monthly and annual licensing. But that does give you access to all of their various different uh, textures that we saw earlier on. Uh, so I don't know what the future is for Mixer and its pricing, but right now it is completely free and it will be as long as it is in beta. So if you already have a like a large collection of PBR textures, it's definitely worth checking out. And then once again, they do make a bunch of freely available ones as well. So if you want to just get started and play around with it, just go ahead, come in here, download as many of the free ones that are relevant and just start mixing it up. It's, it's a very, very straightforward and simple to use tool. And then once you're done and you've got your workflow you want, there's my YouTube uh, YouTube demo map. So I've got it automatically going to the same directory I loaded it from. So I'm going to create a subfolder. Uh, we can add, we can add the, the 2K, 4K or whatever to the resolution. We can switch out our resolution now so make this 4K maps if we so wanted to. Uh, we can pick which texture format we want it to be in. So if we want to export all these things as PNG, we can. We can optionally include the gloss layer or not. So yeah, might as well. And then export. And then we head on over. Very quick process. So right here, YouTube demo map. And there are your various texture channels ready to be used in your game engine or content creation tool of choice. So it's it's so simple to use. Definitely, I would recommend people check out Quixel Mixer if you are looking for a texture generation tool. It is not even close to the workflow that Substance Designer provided. Uh, and Substance Painter has a lot more uh, hands-on control directly over your model UVing layers. But it does do like 40 or 50 percent of what those did plus it has its huge library of textures which you know theoretically could replace a lot of what substance designer was all about and hopefully over time they keep adding more painting functionality so instead of just painting on a flat plane we can actually paint on a fully textured model and at that point then it does start getting a whole lot closer to substance painter in how it works but most importantly right now also it is a completely free beta so i do recommend checking it out it's a pretty awesome program and it should probably be in your toolkit at least so long as it's free um so uh, that's quixel mixer hopefully you found that useful talk to you all later Goodbye.